Hi, this is Julie Hutchinson with Core Performance, and today's topic is dealing with difficult people. Learn the strategies that will transform your relationships and increase your collaboration and productivity. And I am here today with Susan, who is a senior director of HR for a large IT company. And I'm very excited that Susan's here with us because she knows a, a lot about dealing with difficult people in different cases, both from coaching others and dealing with them herself. Susan is also certified as a mediation consultant. And so we're very, very happy to have Susan here today. Susan, welcome. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. I think this is a hot topic. I've talked to many people who have said, what causes me the most amount of stress at work is dealing with these difficult people. If I just had these tools and techniques to deal with them, it would help so much. And I know you and I have had some conversations about this and you really have shed some light on this particular topic. And I thought it would be fantastic to come on here together and share some of these amazing ideas that you've shared with me on how to really get past these difficult times with employees. And so just from, from people's standpoint, if you could just share a little bit about you and what you've done as far as coaching and just kind of set the stage for your background and how you've been able to deal with difficult people, whether it be coaching or dealing with them yourself. Well, both. To answer your question, I, I think we've all encountered difficult people, particularly in the workplace, but also in our personal lives as well. And they can genuinely help, I mean, really hinder our own performance and how well, you know, we react and we perform in the business world and in our personal world as well. So I, earlier in my career, I definitely, you know, had a major challenge with somebody who was very difficult and who I had been assigned to work very closely with for a senior level project. So, um, so I have some techniques around that, but then as I've, I've grown and it, you know, have more experience in my career and there's more and more difficult people that you deal with, I've taken a lot of what I've learned through mediation training and just my own personal experience and being an, a manager uh, for, uh, on a global team of consultants. So you've got cultural expectations too that play into sometimes people, you know, seeming difficult to you, but really sometimes it's just culture. So a, a lot of experience, mostly on the professional side, and I'm, I'm happy to share how I've dealt with them with your audience. Fantastic. And, you know, let's talk about, first of all, when we talk about dealing with difficult people, let's look at some of the consequences that we're being faced with dealing with difficult people. I know several clients of mine have said, you know, when I'm dealing with a difficult person, I tend to shut down. You know, we go either into that fight or flight, and a lot of people will either shut down, and then really it starts to affect their productivity quite a bit, or the other side of that is the fight, like the let's have some drama. And so there can be a lot of office drama that happens. So anything that you'd like to say about maybe some of the things that you've seen with the culture or dealing with difficult people and the consequences of not fixing this? Well, in addition to the personal stress you have, Julie, that, that you mentioned, it you know, can put stress on other relationships in your life. So there are, you know, you're at the office, you have a difficult person you're dealing with, you kind of, in some ways, either you fight or flight, you shut down or you get into an argument, you bring that home. And, you know, you're maybe acting out with your family, which where you didn't act out at work or you didn't handle the situation at work, it kind of carries over to your family. So it's not just your own personal stress. You can also bring that stress into other relationships in your life. Yes, that's, that's very true. And, and we see that if that carries over into the personal world and our personal lives and with our family, that causes more stress. And then that just, it's sort of like this hamster wheel because that stress then can lead to lack of sleep, right? You might wake up in the middle of the night and start thinking about this person and not be able to get back to sleep. And then in not having enough sleep, you go back to work the next day and it can impact your performance. 
So as we can tell, there's just a lot of things that can really be detrimental if we're not dealing with difficult people or stressful people at the office. So let's look at, Susan, maybe a couple of tips that you have for people that are listening in that could really transform some of the relationships they have with other people at work. So what? So, yeah, no, that's a great question, Julie. So, you know, some people, in my experience, I have found that some people just have difficult personalities. <laughs> that's just who they are. And they, they bring that to work and their self everywhere that they go. And I think a lot of times that when there are people like that, they are, you know, maybe they, there's a lot of reasons for that, right? It may be just their personality and there's not a lot you can do about that. It may be that they just don't feel like they're being heard or they don't feel like they're being valued. So I think, and you mentioned this in your, in your introduction about if we try to get to know people on a personal level, maybe sometimes we can find out where is that difficulty coming from? You know, if they're not feeling like they're being heard, you know, and they're being combative, just say, well, what, you know, you obviously don't agree with the direction that we're going, you know, what is your idea or your opinion or your thoughts on things that we should do? And don't let them just tell you what you're saying isn't working, make them contribute so that if they do feel like they're not being heard, you are sitting there and you're listening to them. And I think sometimes that can be a breakthrough. I think so too, you know, listening, people want to be heard. They want to be seen and being heard. And oftentimes behavior can happen because they're not being seen or being heard. So listening is really key, like really, really listening. The other thing too that I've, and you and I have discussed this before is what is the intent behind their behavior? You know, like you were saying is people mm -hmm. be valued. So where can you find value in what people are doing? What can you respect about them? Because in every difficult situation, there's an intent behind it, but there's also something good that we can find. And, and if you could share maybe a little bit about where we're focusing, are we focusing on the problem and the difficulty? Or are we focusing on the solution? Can you speak a little bit about that? Absolutely, Julie. And, it, and, you know, you said it very well, let's focus on the solution. Let's find out why they're being difficult. And you also mentioned this too, you know, sometimes it's just understanding, you know, the person, their personality and their person and their background and their experiences. And I know in the instance that, you know, I want to share with your audience that happened earlier in my career, where I had been assigned a very visible large project with somebody, you know, they were very different from me. They were different ethnicity. They, you know, grew up different from me. They had a very, very difficult childhood, which I didn't find out about until I decided to let my guard down and get to know this person so that maybe I could understand them better. And, and when they shared some of their experiences with me, their life experiences, I actually got to the point where I thought, oh my gosh, maybe I might react to certain situations the same way this person is based on if I had had the same experiences growing up and the same things that had happened to me that had happened to this person. And I think just the fact that I tried to get to know who they were and where they were coming from and kind of their background, I think that helped you know, the situation as well. Yeah, I really like that in that it brings in that listening component. And another thing that I find very interesting, what you said is I decided right? Oftentimes it comes from that decision that if we're judging another person or finding them difficult and we continue to judge them and then we make a decision to no longer judge or a decision to find a connection point or a decision to find a way to respect them, it starts with that decision. And the other thing that I really heard you say is let my guard down. 
because isn't it isn't it often that if we don't have the same viewpoints as somebody else we want to put that that wall up or that guard to keep us safe for, or maybe you have another reason that you put that guard up and i really love what you said is i decided to let my guard down and really get to know this person so re really good tips yeah, and and the other thing that I would um, that I would mention about again this same person in this situation um, that is so strong in my memory about this is I got some advice from somebody that I I very much respected because when I started this project with this person and as you said I put my guard up I didn't like them I wasn't relating to them it just it wasn't working. And when I was at, when I experienced all those emotions that you had talked about, Julian, I came home and I was stressed and I didn't like my job and I wanted to quit. And I was, you know, taking it out of my husband when I came home, when I finally got to the breaking point and I asked for some advice from somebody that I admired, his advice was, okay, pretend that this person is somebody that you respect. Pretend that everything that they say is actually coming from this other individual whose ideas and thoughts you respect so much. So in other words, close your eyes to the person that this is coming from and just hear the words and assume they're coming from somebody you respect. And I cannot tell you what a breakthrough that was for me, uh, that I distanced the person from the ideas that she was bringing to the table. And only then could I accept her ideas as being valuable. And only then could I, then even if I didn't agree with the idea, say, well, that's a good thought, but what if we you know, kind of uh, approached it this way? Whereas previously I said, oh, that won't work because that was the person, but, but I would have never spoken to this other individual that I respected that way. So I just close, I closed my eyes. I said, I'm talking to this person that I admire and I respect and my whole attitude changed. And it was my attitude that in the end I realized was preventing us from moving forward. She was being difficult, don't get me wrong. Um, but I, I had that guard up and I refused to you know, separate this difficult person from her ideas and what she brought to the table. I love that. That is so profound is cl closing your eyes. And of course, when you're in a meeting with that person, you're sure. not going to close your eyes, but just yeah. literally in your imagination, imagining that it's coming from somebody that you really respect and take away the identity of yeah. that person. Right. I think that's fantastic. The other thing that I really heard you say too is, you took responsibility mm -hmm. and yes, they may have been difficult, but you took responsibility. You took the initiative. You sought out a way to find a connection point. And in that connection point, you got to see their viewpoint. You got to see life through their eyes, which was very different. And Rod, I also heard you say, you didn't say the word, but what I got was that you really had compassion for this person and you got to see like, well, maybe that's why they feel this way because of that kind of upbringing. And I think compassion can go a long, long way. I agree. And you know, another thing to think of Julie is a lot of times, you know, these difficult people feel that they're in control and they want, and sometimes that's why they're being difficult because they want to control the situation. But the reality is when you shift your thinking and you try to get to know them and you listen to their ideas and your and their thoughts you are actually the person who's in control because you can control the narrative and it and, and it won't always work i mean there are sometimes difficult people are just going to be difficult people and even if you take the ideas that we're suggesting this way and it doesn't work that then they're a performance problem and they're just not going to change. And if you've tried everything, you know, maybe the last ditch effort is just to put them on a performance plan. You know, if you're their manager and say, you know, you're, you're, you're hurting the performance of the team, 
and you know sometimes you got to take that action but obviously before we go there before we escalate the problem i think you know anybody listening to what you and i are talking about and maybe employing those strategies is a is a good first step before before we go to a drastic step well uh, just to recap a lot of the things that you said here is number one that i heard is take responsibility is when we keep blaming somebody else for the problems or the team's problems and we're not doing anything about it we can't if we blame somebody else the only thing that we can change is really ourselves and our perception of them so take responsibility first make a decision make a decision to find that connection look for ways that you can respect that person or find something genuinely that you love about that person and then the one that i just love so much is imagine whatever they're saying is coming from somebody else that you completely respect and see if that changes how you interact with that person so really good tips i think that this is probably going to help a lot of people Susan, thank you so much for being here. You have so much experience in the business world, especially from HR and then through what you do at, for a living. So I think this has been valuable for a lot of people. Any last minute words that you would like to share with anybody? Uh, thank you, Julie, for having me. I appreciate it. I just hope that the experience that I had and the advice that I got helps your audience avoid conflict because it's just not fun to be there and it's not fun to deal with difficult people and we we all have them in our lives so i think that if we can try to take control of the situation and do something about it we're going to feel a lot better in the end absolutely we can only change ourselves and our perception we can't change anybody else as much as we would like to at true times enough. we just can't do it true enough yeah. So thank you, Susan, for being here. Greatly appreciated. Thanks for these really amazing tips. Thank you, Julie. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.